So hi, Patrick. It's, it's exciting to actually meet you face to face after all these years of following your work and interacting in various venues. So it's great to be here and I'm sitting here in the lovely office of Straits Knowledge just before a conference. So it's an, it's an office that looks like a bunch of people at work. <laughs> and when I came in, you showed me this really cool visual tool that you call the Knowledge Management Planning Kit. And so I'm dying for you to tell me more about it so I can share it with my friends. Okay, so this is something we developed um, in a number of KM planning exercises with clients over the years. And what we realized is common issues appear in different organizations again and again and, uh, and common behaviors that affect knowledge management, knowledge sharing, mm -hmm. both positive and negative, keep recurring across organizations. So we developed some uh, tools. This is um, organization culture cards which is actually a deck of playing cards, so you can play culture poker if you want, or solitaire, and pretend that you're doing work. Oh, do you have um, to bet chocolate or anything? But, but you also, um, you, you, can, you can bet chocolate, you can bet counters, you can uh, bet people, so oh. that, you know, <laughs> your staff strength can depend on uh, whether you win or, or lose. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> Give me a soundtrack in the background. Is, that's right. Um, so each card represents a behavior, either positive or negative, that affects knowledge movement, knowledge sharing. So this one is one of my favorites, the backstabber. Oh, we never see that at work. No. Actually, this came out of a community analysis, strangely enough. And it was more about paranoia. It, it wasn't clear that the behavior actually happened. There was a fear that it was happening. Uh, Slippery Sam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Non-stick. So he's a boss who will not let any, any of your failures stick to him. He's got the Teflon jammies. Yes. Uh, by the way, these can be any, any gender. Uh, Cheap Eric, who's all for quick wins and will not invest in any long-term solutions and so on. So what happens is um, the, the people from the business will go through these and select the behaviors, both positive and negative, that they recognize most mm -hmm. frequently. And you build up a picture across different departments of the most frequently recognized behaviors. Are there sometimes when people interpret uh, what I might perceive as negative, you might perceive as positive? Um, Are these pretty much arc pretty clear archetypes? They're pretty clear cut. Um, mm -hmm. What is important is that they don't identify individuals. Mm -hmm. So they don't assign uh, an individual to a particular behavior. It's very important they recognize it's a behavior that people can share in and that people will often uh, exhibit a range of different behaviors depending on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, and we find it's useful to do some narrative collection around this, so mm -hmm. collect some contextualized stories about how that behavior manifests in that workplace. And that often brings out ambiguities, like something that looks negative can have some positive mm -hmm. impact. And then over here we have more um, sort of issues-based diagnostics. So these are uh, it's a set of diagnostic cards, again, came out of many knowledge audit workshops. There are three kinds of sets of issues. There's coordination issues, learning issues, and organizational memory issues. And each one breaks down to a micro topics. Again, things that you might recognize in your organization. Mm -hmm. And again, the same thing. Uh, we, we get the different departments to select issues that they recognize and then look at the ones that come out most mm -hmm. frequently I have eight to ten here. Do you have just the leadership or the whole team or cross-section of the team? Uh, this works best when you're doing it with um, operational level managers. Mm -hmm. So people who are running a department or the deputies. So the people who understand enough of an overview of the business mm -hmm. but also understand the detail mm -hmm. of what actually happens on the ground. If you were to run it with your staff, do you think you'd get contradictory information? It's interesting if you, if you, okay, you can run it just within a department. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it helps people, because uh, there's a lot of discussion, mm -hmm. and this is built as a tabletop mm -hmm. exercise. So you've got maybe eight, eight people max around the table, mm -hmm. which means you can have really good conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that people are building up a common picture mm -hmm. about how knowledge and information sharing affects their work, which is a good thing to do anyway. Mm -hmm. If you do it across departments, then you do a frequency analysis. Okay. And, that, and that's quite useful uh, for going to your senior leadership and saying, well, look, you know, seven out of ten departments see this as a dominant behavior, or this is a common issue that people have to face. Mm -hmm. And then we have other insights that we might bring in from uh, other knowledge audit activities, like what are our uh, knowledge risks? Uh, do we have knowledge gaps to fill? Um, 
what kind of knowledge assets do we need to, to protect the most and what kind of knowledge sharing opportunities do we have? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in the conversation, the group will agree on what the priority issues are, which might be a combination of any of these issues mm -hmm. up here. And once they've got identified a priority set of issues, then they can start brainstorming interventions. And that's mm -hmm. where we use our, it's actually our oldest product, which is a set of KM method cards. Uh, so you guys all, you know, like card sharks? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, actually makes our job a lot easier. First of all, it makes knowledge management accessible to the people who have to end up consuming it, mm -hmm. which is people in the operations. Uh, second, we were talking earlier about change management. Mm -hmm. This is probably the most important change management activity you can do, which is help people participate in their own diagnostics and, and planning. Um, and third, it means that we can genuinely facilitate rather than trying to imagine what their situations might be like and sort of imagine best practice solutions that might not apply in their context. So then they will just brainstorm interventions. This, this part, uh, looking at approaches, methods, tools they might use, is probably the one where our expertise is most useful because we can explain a lot of the um, implications of using a particular technique mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be familiar with necessarily. Mm -hmm. And might be afraid of them otherwise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Even though most of them are very accessible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes they kind of overestimate how much effort is involved in a, in a given approach. They overestimate. Oh, oh, sorry, underestimate. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of merrily lay out 12 different interventions and then you have to point out this is probably about three years of work with a full-time team of eight. <laughs> so again, the value add is helping people prioritize and understand the strategic right. value of each one of those things. Right. Right. And the resources required. And as you pointed also, it's washable, you know, so you it's can have washable, a meal on top of it know, as well. Meal, coffee, stains, everything, all completely washable, yes. All of the evidence can be removed. So it's really interesting, you know, oh, each element unto itself may seem very simple, but people don't see about how these things come together. Right. And, I, you know, in looking at this overview, that's what's interesting to me, is you're giving a way to situate the different pieces and bring it down into... Something Action. manageable. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and manageable. Yeah, like, come on, be kind to yourself. Yes, yeah. yeah. This is great. So, um, so uh, what I'm going to do is put at the bottom of this video a URL so if people want to know more about it, they can find out about it. And, you know, maybe more stories about it on your blog, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.